Welcome to another SMA video for the home inspectors. This video is about the kickout or diverter flashing. We will look at the purpose of this flashing, where it is used, and some best practices. The SMA is aware that as a home inspector, you are charged with a great responsibility and your report may be scrutinized by others. We also know that you're typically limited to only what you can see. We want to help you with a fair report to the seller and buyer of single family homes with stock. The kickout, or what many call a diverter flashing, is used at the roof to wall connection and is designed to direct, divert, or kick water out from the wall and roof to the gutter. It is a simple angled piece of metal or plastic, easily installed during construction. A roof to wall connection with a kickout or diverter provides some assurance that the general contractor and roofer understood the importance of this simple flashing piece. Stucco lacking this piece is a sign of concern. While it is not the plasterer's responsibility, they should be putting the general contractor on notice that kickout or diverter is strongly recommended. The SMA and other industry groups provide specific details on how and why to install this type of flashing. The principle is really quite simple. We know that most rainwater hits the stucco wall and is deflected down. However, the industry acknowledges that incidental or small amounts of water may find its way behind the stucco membrane. This must be accounted for. This is why we want the building paper to lap the roof step flashing. This is the side view of the step flashing and the casing bead used for stucco, and it works. The upgraded version is using a piece of metal shaped in a Z over a 1x4 spacer. We call this Z-bar flashing. The building paper laps the Z-bar and it has a three-quarter inch slope for ground and weep. The Z-bar also makes re-roofing simpler as any new roof flashing can be tucked under the Z-bar with no need to disturb the stucco. Best practices include using a flashing paper. This is concealed and you will not see this. It is a simple slip sheet between the rafter end and the sheathing. It helps prevent water that might have entered at the outer edge of the kickout and edge of the fascia from reaching the sheathing. It is critical to lap the building paper over at the top of this flashing paper and under at the bottom. This maintains the shingle fashion principle to shed water. These upgrades of Z-bar and hidden flashing are not required, but it does not mean that there's a problem if they're not present. This is simply best practices. It is not uncommon to see the Z-bar type flashing added on top of the stuff at a later date. Many assume this works. After all, we see this on masonry chimneys all the time. It should be noted the masonry wall is a barrier moisture management system with water not anticipated to pass the exterior. This is why mounted flashing can work on concrete masonry walls. For stuck on frame walls, the surface mounted flashing should be investigated more thoroughly. The SMA always recommends kickouts as well as other trims, but lacking these items does not mean automatic failure and should not be the reason for the sale of any home to fall through. We need to assess each home and its location on its own merits. For example, that surface mounted Z-bar on that northeastern home, it turns out they've never had any signs of water intrusion or problems. So noting the lack of the kickout is certainly appropriate, but so too is the fact that no issues have ever been noted. What you need to be looking for is signs of water problems, such as this home that had water entry noted at the head of the window. Because if water is getting in, trouble is not far behind. Feel free to use the SMA to help you in your decision and your report writing. This brief presentation is brought to you by the SMA members and these regional stucco groups. We hope you will click like and subscribe. Please review other SMA videos to learn more.